snatch, 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 snatch the out of the devil's kingdom. Oh, snatch, 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 snatch the out of the devil's. And if they don't want it, don't fuss it. And if they refuse it, then dust your feet out the door and keep stepping until you find someone who trusts. The name of the Lord is where I'm hidden, and all I do is. Been a long time. Yeah. Shouldn't have left you it's without never, a never. cast to pod two, uh, um, pod two, um, pod two, um, pod two. Uh, oh, okay, I, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cannot see me coming. My enemies will never see me coming. Oh. Well, what up, what up, uh, what, what, what up, like, shorty? What up, baby? Eh? Hi. Do you, do you live in this area? <laughs> oh, yes, I live in this area. Just to pass around here. Can I have okay. your number, no, my baby? I, I don't give my number to strangers. Don't give your number to strangers. <laughs> what it do, guys? What it do? Yes. Huh. We know you guys have been waiting. <laughs> I have. We are so sorry. I was about to lie. But... That it has taken this mm-hmm. long. But you know, we're nearly wed. <laughs> we had to go away on honeymoon. Yeah. And we're saying... You have to, you know, do some prayer and fasting. <laughs> laying of hands. Oh, yes. Laying and of nice. hands. <laughs> but we're so excited. I definitely want to talk about the same thing. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to see But uh, you're welcome, guys. It's a brand new season of the Meet the Snatchers podcast. podcast. Of course, I remain Nikki Lau, yay. You remain. Where are you going to do change? <laughs> uh, you know, Snatch is the name. It's challenge the game. You know how it is. Yeah, we know how it is. Let's get it going. Yes, let's get it going. Yeah. So, of course, everyone has been asking, please, when is the podcast coming back? It's we back. you guys. We're back. But, you yeah. know, we actually told you or hinted you on our Instagram Live the other day that, you know, we also... Uh, wanted to wait for the release of the brand new single. Oh, I, I do, do, I do. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I do our uh, most recent single. In case you haven't heard it, maybe you're just hearing about it for the first time on the podcast today. Mm-hmm. Snatching. I released a brand out. new single called I Do. It's a fantastic song, which is the perfect soundtrack to our love and commitment for one another. And we pray that, of course, it reignites the passion, love and commitment for every relationship mm-hmm. and marriage out there yep. so of course that is why this new podcast series is called the i do series yes yes we decided to tailor the new season around the song and the concept and the ideology behind the song of course i do is our own soundtrack because it's uh also a song of commitment saying that for as long as we live we do promise to do anything that we want for each other anything Mm -hmm. that we both need will be there and all of that because the thing is if we don't do scooby will do you get it scooby do how are you scooby do if if snatcher doesn't i'll be here all week tip your waitresses I got jokes for uh, two years. But seriously, if Snatcher doesn't do that, then there's no Snatcher. What you mean? <laughs> well, basically, so that's what the I Do series is about. And mm-hmm. what we want to do with the series is to talk about very important deal breakers before you say I do and after you say I do. And of course, uh, we know that there's so many topics, there's so many videos, podcasts, and things about relationship out there. So I know that you yeah. guys must have been jotting things down and for And people that have collected time. degree and collected... <laughs> we are only speaking from our yes. own experiences. Yeah. And we just thought it would be great to share. So we decided to talk about the major deal breakers mm-hmm. that we had to look out for before we said I do. And even right now, after we've said I do, mm-hmm. even though some people might say, ah, well, two people have just been married for how many months now? Mm-hmm. But the truth is, we, you guys need to remember that, of course, we've both been married before so we've also had an idea of what marriage is about and is like so it has actually helped us to understand the new things maybe the things we want to continue from yeah. our previous relationships or the things that we want, we want to, to just continue yeah. yes so that's basically what the i do series is about and we're going to be talking about very major deal breakers and today Damn we just wanted to focus first of all before of course on the deal breakers before we said i do Mm. When I mean deal breakers, um, things that we had to take important notice of before we said I do. And of course... Hmm, what was the deal breaker for me? 
What's the deal breaker for you? But let me open my notes. Yeah, you have notes. Have notes today because <laughs> there, are, there are things to talk about. <laughs> but seriously, what we want this episode to actually help to cover is to also talk to young people out there, people that are not even married yet, people that want to say, oh, I'm ready to say I do. How do I do? How do I behave? How do I move from this level to that next level? Or maybe someone that is coming after a divorce or the loss of a spouse and you want to start all over again. And you're like, how do I get to that point of saying I do again? And what are the things that we looked out for? And the very first thing on our list is we looked out for ourselves first. When I mean you first, me first, him first. Yeah. Yes. It was very, very important for us to actually look out for ourselves first because we're both coming from different places and before you step into a new relationship the first person you need to take a deep look inwards into is you you. and that's what we want to come to for everyone out there you know the thing is that people might say oh is it that you're trying to say because oh you had a divorce he had a loss of a spouse no but the truth is that some of you have actually come out of relates broken relationships you mm-hmm. know, and there are things that you went through that you need to deal with first or work on first before you can say you want to attach somebody else to you. Yeah. Right. Because if, if you don't watch those things then the, or those deal with those things, the person coming, usually we find out in most in some relationships, the new partner inherits mm. the faults, the sins of the former one. Yeah. You know, because you, you you know, you concluded in your mind that this is how all men are, mm, all women are. Scum. You know, huh? all <laughs> women are. Mm. So you 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 now you now superimpose that feeling. Yeah. So first of first of all, you need to deal with yourself. Yeah. And you also need to know that you're dealing with a new person. Yeah, true. With their own peculiar flaws. Yeah. And peculiar. So sometimes I, I say to people. Allow you get see what it is that that's another person that you know this new person let him make his own mistakes yeah because the truth is that if, when you don't deal with those issues that you've had from the past relationship or the mm-hmm. past marriage um unknowingly your next partner or spouse might trigger something that will make you react negatively the person had no idea and the person will be like uh what just what happened going uh, what's going on what did i do what did i say but the person doesn't know that they actually just triggered something so that's mm. why it's very important that deal with you first where you're coming from is there anything you know always take a do a personal analysis that's what i will call it of yourself from where you're coming from what do i need to work on about myself first what do i need to change what do i need to shape up because the truth is i know we human beings generally can be also a little bit selfish in the sense that oh i want to be happy i want to i want the next day i want to fall in love but the truth is that the other person you forget that the other person too is coming Saying, I want to be happy too. I want to be in love too. So are you really in the right place to give what that other person too is looking for? Mm. So that's where what we're trying to talk about. And it was something I had to do for myself. Let me even talk about myself uh, in so many ways. Because growing up to be this young lady who's always been such a lover girl, who loves love. And I've had different situations and different um relationships that just didn't go quite right and then finally had a marriage that didn't turn out right and i had to sit down and give myself this personal analysis that okay what could i have done better what did i do wrong where could i have gone wrong you know the truth is that yes it takes two to tango Mm -hmm. so you have to sit down and ask yourself your own questions and sort out your own issues and um I had to do that for myself. So that's me. But for you out there who is listening to us, it might not even be issues from a past relationship or a past marriage. It might be issues even from your Maybe childhood. Yeah, you the one that have the problem. No, I'm I'm actually even going somewhere. Okay. It might even be issues from your childhood. Maybe something that you've not dealt Dealt with. with. Maybe your father abandoned you or your mother abandoned you or maybe you even went through some kind of abuse. I just realized that people just don't stay. Yeah. People come and go. Or you walk away from people because you don't know how to give yourself 100% to people because of what you have gone through. The truth is that a lot of people are dealing with this. And sometimes uh, people don't know that these issues are there. Especially back home in Nigeria where therapy and a lot of all these things were not really the norm or Mm -hmm. are not really a major thing in Nigeria. So a lot of people didn't even know they had baggages or things they were dealing with from their childhood until they grew older. 
and maybe now that you're older you're watching movies or you were maybe when you're in university and you're doing maybe a course on psychology or something and they say something you're like oh so i've been dealing with something like this i didn't even know it was an issue mm. so the truth is you need to take uh, a personal analysis of yourself and ask yourself what problems do i have what issues have i been dealing with do i have an issue with um you know because sometimes when you've gone through even stages of abuse you might not necessarily want anyone to even touch you Mm. You know, and the truth is that you want to get married. You want to have sex and intimate relations, of course, with your partner and all of that. And you can't even allow anyone to come near you. That already will be a big problem if you don't deal with it first. And yeah. of course, I know that there's a side for, there's a spiritual side of dealing with these things, you know, praying about it, going to God about it, talking to pastors. But it's very important that you also get therapy and get counseling where necessary. It's very, very important because I know back home in Nigeria, we don't take this thing seriously, but there's some people out there that might need to have yeah. proper counseling, yeah. or proper therapy sessions to deal with these issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and to add to that, in case, hmm? in case, smells bad, like we concentrate. See, I'm I trying always to distract it. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, for me, I had to deal with the fact that. Um, you know, after loss of wife, so many thoughts, so many, and I used to play with my friends, but later on, I decided to say, hmm, it's not, with a friend, particular friend of mine, and I was like, hmm, it might not be a bad idea. Like, look, right now, Father God, don't be giving, sending me a Mawubi. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> so, you know, you know, and I had to, hey, look, I'm not in the freedom of mind of a relationship. Maybe, hmm. you know, you know, you just think, okay, where is my mind? Yeah. Where am I? Yeah. And to thyself be true. Yeah, to thyself to be thyself true. To thyself be true. Where are you? And God just basically just kept me to say, look, let me, let me, let me deal with you quickly. And let me deal with you. Mm. So that by the time, because yes, you, you, you have someone who is hurt, hurting from one particular thing. You have another person who is hurting from another particular thing. When, if they come together, yeah. it's going to, they will hurt each other. Yeah. Yeah. Hurt people, and hurt people hurt people. people. And yeah. that's not the intention. So they end up looking like a bad guy. Yeah. But that's not the intention, but because they've not dealt with the root of it. Yeah. And there are certain people who are used to other people being the issue, mm -hmm. other people being the problems. Yeah. Well, you need to stop and look that maybe because don't run before you run to go and post on your status that <laughs> people share. <laughs> maybe that people is you. Yeah. You know, and you de dealing with yourself and be able to let things go. Yeah. You know. And you know, when, when it now comes to this thing about you first, mm. that is the first point we wanted to align that you need mm -hmm. to actually ask yourself before I say I do, how am I doing? Am mm. I okay? Am I ready for this, this next relationship? Mm -hmm. Am I really ready to step in? Have I healed first? Because the most important thing, you also need to give yourself time to heal. Give, especially if you're someone that's gone through a very traumatic situation, it's okay to actually give yourself time to heal before you go into the next relationship. Okay, that that is also a very important point that I wanted to um yeah. you know point out there. Then also the next question is now, okay, now you've healed, now you've thought about everything. What exactly are you looking for in a mate? That's another important question. What what are you like? I always tell people that when Snatcher and I we're gonna get back together or oh, I said get back together. We're mm -hmm. gonna to get together. Um the first thing I had to ask myself, or rather even Snatcher had not even come on the scene then. Sorry, that was even before Snatcher. When I finally got to the place where I had healed, I had actually I actually asked God, okay, so where do I serve next? Because for me, I'd come to that point where I had um, decided that for me, marriage is a place of service. Yes, it's going to come with all the love. It's going to come with all the romance. It's going to come with everything. But the major aim for me for marriage will be service. So the question is, what is your own aim? You know, it's, it's very important that in anything you're doing in life, you should know why you want to do it. Why do you want to get married? Objective. Oh, I want to get married because I don't want to be alone. I, I want I want to get married because I'm looking for someone that will take care of me. You know, people have different reasons. That's where I'm going to. So what is your own genuine reason? But you have to be... Because when, when things yeah. get tough, what you go back to is that why. Mm, yes. You always go back yes. to that why. Yes. Okay, true. this is why I decided, made this decision. Yeah. This is why I was so sure. 
Okay, and that why yeah. will propel you further. Yeah. So that why will motivate you. So you always go back to that why. When so that's why the why is important. Yeah, that why is very important. And also, you need to also ask yourself, what are you bringing to the table? Because we're very quick to want something from other people, but you yourself, you've not stopped to ask yourself, oh, what are you bringing? Oh, I want him to be tall, dark, and answer. I want him to be kind. I want him to be sensitive. I want him to be this and that. Hello, madam, are you kind? Or, hello, brother, are you sensitive? You know, because you cannot be taken and taken and taken and you have nothing to give. Mm. So the truth is that you have to even ask yourself the question before anybody even asks you, what am I bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. You understand? And make sure that you lay these cards on the table for that person too because it's a transaction in quotes. Yes, marriage is going, it's a transaction. He's giving, I'm giving. So we're both giving, but we're both giving 100. And give each. us never lack. And give us never lack. Hallelujah. <laughs> but seriously, that giving, you know, they used to say, oh, maybe you give 50 50. No, give 100 100. Give it, give it all. Give, give it, it all. all. I'm bringing my 100. He's bringing his 100, and we're putting it together. It's, yes. My house is 200. Yours is 200. <laughs> mm. So at this point in time, you will now move on to that next stage of, okay, now you've decided what you want, blah, blah, blah. Then you not meet this guy. Boy meets girl. Girl meets boy. And you're not in that place where you guys are dating. You guys are trying to find out what, what, what we have. What, what, what do we have? Mm. And then, of course, there's this um, statement from way back. When we were young, that used to say, opposites are trapped. <laughs> <laughs> and my question today is, do opposites really attract? Opposites are trapped to attack. <laughs> Yes, of course. I mean, now you have to think about mm. what's our opposites. Mm. <laughs> because there's Maryland in Lagos. There's Maryland in London. Are they the same thing? Um, you understand? Uh -huh. So what I'm trying to say is that... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good... But you because, there's Maryland here. <laughs> yeah, and there's Maryland in America. You want to compare yeah, it to Maryland. Yeah, there's Maryland and there's Maryland, Maryland in Lagos. <laughs> is that not what's our opposites? Is the Maryland in Lagos not the opposite of... So, but... What I'm saying is you you have your your why. Your why is now your value. Mm. Mm. These are, this is my value. And values are also you, you, that you've built up. Maybe your relationship with God, the way you were brought up. Now you are meeting someone. Mm. Do your values align? Mm. That's what you need to look at first. Now, I mean, opposite shouldn't be the extreme. Oh, he... he I don't know what, what, what extreme I could put now. Mm -hmm. Because when you say... The opposite should be things like maybe they're not doesn't have to anything to do with the values. Yeah. Probably recreational. She likes yeah. she likes us now. I like basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You can should... live with that. Yeah. Because the truth is that opposites do attract, but to an extent. Extent. There's an extent. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would like to say similarities are key. Very key. Very key. Okay, so where, where these opposites attract and all, I think we should, the best way to now categorize it, let's categorize them into wants and needs. Because yeah. what do you really need in that relationship? It's I different. I need love. Go on. Focus. <laughs> what do you really want in, uh, need in a relationship? Mm -hmm. And what do you really want? When, when, when I try to balance the ideologies of needs and wants, needs are things that are very important. They are very crucial. needed. They are very crucial. Needed. While wants are things that yeah. you can do without. If yeah. you have it, you'll be fine. If you don't have it, you'll yeah. still be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what a want is. Yeah. So when it comes to this um opposite attraction, for a relationship, I believe you should have more of similarities and less of um, differences. Oppo Oppositarities. <laughs> Oppositarities. <laughs> you are not serious. But seriously, you really need more of similarities than differences. Mm. Why? Let, okay, let me even give a scenario. Yeah. When uh, COVID happened, and couples had to be on lockdown dun, 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 dun. for a very long time. I, I don't know if you guys heard the gist, but a lot of marriages broke down. Yeah. Because they're not used to being around. They were each not other. used to around to be. Uh, they were not used to being around each other. One, and then a lot of couples actually found that that they they had so little in, in common. common. <laughs> so staying together in the same building 
um, in the same room, in the same house for long months of time. and for about over a year plus on end was crazy because the truth is that a lot of people actually were hiding behind their children were hiding behind work, work. because so the, the amount of time they used to spend with each other was very and little very, yeah. because people just wake up in the morning good morning babe good morning okay they go to work come they back take, at night and come back at night so when you Dinner, calculate it, at the end of the day they were spending maybe just one or two hours really in a day with each mm. other but when the lockdown then happened they had to spend hours you can't share that months <laughs> Days, <laughs> full year like, who is this person? with each other, and they found out that they had little in common, and that is why that thing is very important. That before you even say I do, that you actually ensure that you're with someone that you have a lot of things in common. When we say a lot of things in common, your needs. What are those important things in a relationship to you? You have to make sure that that person mm -hmm. also shares that shares. common feature with you. Maybe you're someone that really likes. Um, Maybe to spend time. Now, this will now come to your love languages. You know, mm. if you actually have similar love languages, it would actually help so that you can spend more time together and do a lot of things together. Yeah. Like my husband and I, we love to spend time with each other. We love spending time. So literally, we spend a lot of time with each yeah. other. Either we make sure that we eat together. We actually always make sure we eat together. We have our favorite series. We have our favorite things. So we do a lot of things together because mm -hmm. it's very important to us. But when it comes to other things like work and all, we are not in the same space all the time. Yeah. We have different... Even though we have, our works are similar. Yeah. But the certain times, I mean... You do your thing. Yeah, we do mm -hmm. our things in different places too. So it's very important that similarities, you need to have a lot of similarities in place. Make sure you guys have similar values, similar interests, and similar goals. Because these are the things that will keep you communicating. It will yeah. keep you talking. Oh, it will keep you sharing. It will keep you spending time together, mm -hmm. you know. And of course... um. You also need to be very, very mindful of this um, wants and needs so that you don't lose a good relationship or a good marriage over wants mm. instead of needs. Mm. Because some people now might say, oh, can you imagine? I, I like to watch football. She, she doesn't like to watch football. And mm -hmm. the thing is now causing fights. And you understand? Some yeah. people actually have serious fights because oh, yeah, of yeah. things like that. But that should even cause a fight. Because he wants to watch football. You don't want to watch football. Okay, that's just his thing. If you want to be there to share that moment with him, fine. fine. You know, you can share that moment with him. And dude, you don't have to be upset that she doesn't want to share that time mm -hmm. with you. I'm just using football alone. There are other things too. Because your marriage can do with or without football. Mm -hmm. As in like, yeah. it's not a major defining situation in your relationship or your marriage. I mean, so, um, for instance, yeah. she, we're, we're, like when we go shopping, yeah, I don't like to go shopping. <laughs> I like to go shopping on my own because I know I'm looking for four items that in these two aisles I go straight there pick them up and I'm out but you look at, you like to look at it something that you don't intend to buy you didn't plan to buy you don't even probably won't be buying that day but just to look at it <laughs> like oh they have they have parallelogram do we need a parallelogram no but you want to look at it. So I didn't know they have it. Oh, they're nice. I'm like, you know, so, but I is okay. While you are looking at parallelogram or you're looking at you're in the match store, looking at um, foundation because if the foundation is destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. check me. If you are, when we are done, I'm at the Apple store. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at them, uh, you know, or, or, or the gadget store or something, yeah. you know, it does not have to cause fights. It doesn't have to cause <laughs> fights. No, seriously. And because what is what what the most important thing at the end of the day is become aware of your own needs, find out your partner's needs, and learn to talk about it with each other. What I really prepare you. Are, 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 are I have notes. notes. <laughs> I have notes. It's true. You have to know your own needs. So the most important mm. thing is that some people actually don't even know what they need. No. You need to that's actually, why you have to find yourself. Yes, that's why we're talking about finding yourself first. What do you really need from a relationship? That it's very important that for you it's a deal breaker. That is, if this thing is not in this relationship, so, I cannot yeah. manage. Yeah, that's how I will put it. What is it that is so important to you that has to be in a relationship that you cannot manage? That for you is a major need. Mm. And you now need to find out if that other person has that similar need to you. 
-hmm. It's very important because if that person doesn't, and the person says, I don't worry now, I can manage, I'll change for you. Trust me, people don't change. People don't really change. People don't really change. Down the line, it might cause issues if that person is not really into stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that for a relationship and a marriage to succeed, you have to have overlapping needs. Overlapping needs and overlapping interests. What I mean by overlapping, similar. That as in very key, it is so key. It's a major force between Snatcher and I that has helped our relationship, our marriage till now. Because we have a lot of things that we do together, we share together. That thing is very, very key. It's very, very crucial. And mm -hmm. that's why you have to communicate. Communicate your needs. Yes, mm -hmm. down to your sex life. Everything you want before you... I mean, this, I'm even saying this is before you say I do. Before you even say I do. And even after... Hey, they should be talking about sex. Yes, you have to. You well, didn't we talk about it. This is young one. I remember I don't talk oh, about sex. Oh, get out. That thing is very important because it has caused issues. Yes, we're going to have a very special episode talking about sex. That one you see. But seriously, it's very, very mm. important that you guys communicate your needs. Yeah. Tell each other it's what crucial. you want before you get married. Oh, I'm someone that has a very high sexual libido. Even if you've never had sex before, you would know. See... God has given us urges and all of that. That even if you're still a virgin, you know, even before you get married, gish gish. your body will be doing gis gis. You will know <laughs> that feeling. You know that, oh, maybe I'm someone that might, I like to hug. You will even know from when you hug someone or hug your, um, your loved one, the way it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. These are not bad things. It's very, very important that you are attracted, yes, to oh, each yeah. other. Someone might say, ah, sexually attracted, but well, hey, I'm a child of God, I haven't had sex yet. Yeah, that's... Well, see, I'm actually saying you don't have to have sex before you know you're sexually attracted to someone. It's from mm -hmm. the little things. Oh, when you just see him, how do you feel? You know, like, oof, ah, when he just walks in front of you. I had to go jiggy, 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 pam, pam. <laughs> when she passes in front of you, see, we're being realistic here because we're going towards marriage and I'm not coming from a point where you are committing sin, you know, with your eyes or something. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to say that. But you should be able to look at that person. The person looks pleasing to you. Mm -hmm. That is, the man looks pleasing. The woman looks, oh, she looks amazing. Oh, I love the way she looks because it's, those things are very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you must also have that, um, you always want that person around you. Yes, mm -hmm. those things matter. But you know the truth about attraction? Attraction grows. What do I mean by att attraction? An attraction can die. The oh, way, yeah. And you know what, what, what kills attraction the most? The way you treat the, the, your other partner. Because even if that person is the most beautiful man or woman in the world, the person has a nasty attitude, a nasty character. Mm -hmm. After a while, the person will start looking ugly to you. Mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Oh, I thought they said beauty is now the beer holder. So it's beer holder. I used to say beer holder. Beer holder, of course. <laughs> Gojo. But seriously, beholder, because it depends on what you are seeing. That's how mm. that person will continue to look beautiful to you. So also, you need to remember that, you know, for that attraction to stay throughout your relationship, you have to treat each other right. You have to treat each other good. That's what actually helps attraction to grow. My mom will always say, Say it again, repeat it again. So she taught you basically is how you treat your wife. Yeah. That's how you enjoy her. Yeah. How you take care of her, that's how you enjoy her. And vice versa. It's the um, way you take care of your possible. husband. That's how you would enjoy and him too, yes. Abby. Yeah. Because um my my husband right here, he's such a kind man. Is very caring. Is very helpful. And the truth is that every day I tell him, sometimes he catches me staring at him. <laughs> and I mean, by the way, you are staring at me too. God, yeah. He catches me staring at him sometimes. And he'll be like, what is it? And I'm like, gosh, you're just, you're just, you're just a blessing. You're just so cute. You're just so adorable. And the truth is, he looks more handsome and more cute to me daily because of the things that he does, the way he showers me with love, the way he takes care of me and the children. And in my eye, oh, girl, he's so fine. And in my eye, he's Jedi. So are you trying to say that he's the eye of the Jedi? Oh, no, God has of me in Ojoy like that. Well, that's on me on the island. On... Let me land <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, he's so fine physically, but his fineness, ah, uh, fineness, his fineness, fineness. 
Uh, you see, no one, you, see, you understand now. His fineness actually, I have to say it like that, yeah, has he, actually grown or keeps growing daily because of the love he shows to me. And that is what I want to tell you out there. Your attraction, the way you look attractive to someone actually grows depending on the way you treat your partner. Mm. the way you are to them mm. that's why we've been talking about all these character traits and everything yeah. about you first you first you first before you even look at the other person you, know, you imagine you know, every time you fly on the plane and they they give that safety thing they yeah. tell you to fix your ma mask first yeah in case of an emergency fix yeah. your mask first before the person beside you because if you if you're not whole yeah you can't you can't help another person you can't be you shouldn't even be with another person until you find yourself, you know yourself. Yeah. How are they supposed to know you when you don't know yourself? When you don't know yourself. So which, per which self are you giving to that person? Yeah. You know, when you, you haven't discovered who you are. Yeah, that thing is very important. And another major deal breaker is communication. See, I, 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 there's no point in marrying somebody or deciding to be with someone if you guys are not going to communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about talking. No, it's not just about just gisting, gisting communication. But real talk. Real talk about everything, your lives, your your marriage, your home. How is everything going to be? How are we going to run this home? How are mm -hmm. we going to raise the children? Our sex life. Hello. It's very important. These things are not always being discussed, especially... I don't mean it about it, especially in Christian relationships. Mm -hmm. I don't. I know there's this thing of trying to not stir up fl uh, the, the flames and all mm. those things, but it's very important to discuss these things because at the end of the day, we're all human, and you need to ask yourself questions like, "Oh, do you like sex? Oh, have you had sex before?" Because whether we like it or not, a lot of people have had some histories and baggage and things that they've had. And sometimes to them. You, you need to know what. What part of that person's history you yes. want to know? Yeah. It's just important to actually say this. Not You don't necessarily have to even go into to details. details yeah. Neither should you force anybody to give up details from their lives. But you just really want to know. Mm. You know, not because you want to use it to mm -hmm. condemn them. Not because you want to use it to fight them later. Because some people would like to do that thing. You it's not that, that. Yeah. Get information. I, I think I'm one of your exes that's... Because you that you used to blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, uh, you're not trying to get information because you want to mm -hmm. use it against your partner, but you want to in intentionally and you want to know them genuinely. Yeah, that's where I want. To, I'm going to, and it's important to have these discussions. Oh, I have a high sex libido, or oh, I feel like I'm someone that might like sex a lot, and all of that things. That you might want to talk about that, and also because some people are coming from maybe um uh, someone that some people have been married before, so this time around this is not even their first relationship mm -hmm. so they've had sex before and they know what they want and by now so because two of us we've actually been married before and we both knew that hey this sex thing you know, is very important <laughs> to the two of us we, we have to tell them it's part of the gist they want they don't want to <laughs> but <laughs> seriously we are sharing ourselves abby we're sharing our yeah. But the two of us, sex is very important to mm. us and we told each other from the get go me I like sex I said I like I said come on high five High five now. <laughs> and like, high five. So we knew that that area is already covered. It's never going to be a problem between us. And um, of course, we're going to do an extensive episode on sex. That's going to be the very next How episode. How extensive? We're going to talk a lot. At least a bit more. Okay, just talk. Yeah, a, a bit no more. Practical. No practical. Uh -uh. Amen. Who they do practical? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not on camera. What do you talking about? Ah, okay, no, now nah. after yeah, after. Nah, <laughs> after. Um, so back to mm -hmm. what we're trying to say. So communication is key. Also, also, some even when you're dating and even when you're married, always, um, always you can demand how you well, not basically demand how you be treated. For instance, if your partner might say something to hurt you and might not mean it. And instead of you to just, you know, build it up and be angry about it, there's certain things you just let slide. Yeah. But there's certain things you have to respectfully and nicely go Bring like, it up. Oh, yeah. I know you probably didn't mean it that way, but when you said da 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 da, it hurt me. Yeah. Now, if someone said to you that something this you said hurt them, irrespective of how you meant it, irrespective yeah. of what the plan was when you said that, you know. Don't go like, ah, but oh, I didn't mean for like it to hurt that. you. But I'm sorry. But then this is what I mean. Then the person might be able to say, okay, you get what you say you mean, 
But when you want to communicate yeah. that, communicate it this way. Yeah. Now, the person has learned that, oh, if I say it, even though it's not particularly hurtful, yeah. but if I say it that way, it can be perceived. Yeah. Because um, offense is, is given. Well, well, well it's not, not taken. taken yeah. yeah, so you can decide <laughs> to take offense or not take offense. Yeah. And it's, you're also, it's not every point. Eh, yeah, you have said it again. Or, you know, give the person time to... No, but the fact it. that you even brought this up brings me to a, a point I was also going to make us talk about or add to this, that mm. at the end of the day, make sure you're saying I do to someone you can't talk to. You know what I mean? Mm. That you can't talk to. Like what he just said. Someone that when there's an issue, you guys can sit down and, and talk. talk. That's why I'm talking about that communication. Not someone that you're afraid. Ha, I cannot go and talk to him. Hey, mm. He will vex now. Please, why are you... Excuse me. The, 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 why are you guys <laughs> trying to get married in the first place yeah. if you can't talk to each other doing. you know what are you guys doing you should be able to talk to each other something has gone babe ah, something happened earlier on or you hurt me or, or you understand on both way on both sides you guys have to be able to talk to each other so this was saying that these are major deal breakers mm. you need to check before oh. you get not someone that'll say what do you mean you have no respect why are you talking to me like that you know at, at the end of the day you're not coming mm. to be anybody's boss or anybody's lord and master mm -hmm. in the home so you have to be with someone that you guys can communicate and genuinely talk to each other especially when there are issues that need to be dealt with also keep an eye out for how he or she treats people that they think are of lower standards to them yeah remember that in the dating stage everyone's trying to impress the other person yeah so they go to a restaurant and yeah and the waiter or the person yeah. that opens the door the security guard and they're being very rude or, yep. you know, you're like, hmm. Yeah, Or true. the way very they true. talk to the person, like, hmm. Very it's true. only after, you know, if that person has that kind of sense and that kind of value that thinking that, oh, these people are beneath me, there's a high possibility that it will get to a point where he begins to see you that way. Yeah, very, very true. You know? Very true. Or, or even when it comes to physical abuse, he didn't hit you. But they hit the wall because it was angry. Oh, you've already jumped the gun. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I don't have notes. You have jumped, jumped the gun. Uh, this one is from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm actually intentionally putting them under categorization oh, okay. so that people, when people are going back to look at it, mm. you know, they can actually pick the areas, areas they need to pinpoint. The area my husband has done to now are the is a point we call the red flags. Mm -hmm. the red flags there are lots of red flags out there you need to notice yeah. or point out and my husband was talking about the abusive red flag thank continue. you continue okay thank you very much uh welcome, madam for this yeah, welcome, for sir. giving me the mic yes sir so yeah <laughs> you need to you, you need to you need to look out for those things because oh when he's angry he clenches his fist mm. or she she goes mm. ah if not i fall I fought, I fought, you I know? fought, slap you now. Yeah, yeah. ah, ah, but, you know, some Christians be like, ah, if not for the fact that it's the Holy Spirit is holding me back. Go and ask of me when I was a non-believer. Uh -huh. oh. mm. yeah, the person is a non-believing believer. Yeah. So, 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 watch out for those things. Don't think you can change anyone. Yeah, you can't change anyone. That, I don't that, think the more I love yeah. him, the maybe the more, you know, change. or the more I love her, maybe she, because women too are prone to that, yeah. you know, nah. No, because that thing is very, very key. You know, sadly, recently we lost um a major gospel artist, you know, mm. um Osinachi. And from, you know, some of the facts we heard, we heard that sometimes she was saying that, oh, she was hoping that he would change. And, you know, sadly, he didn't change, you know, in terms of the abusive moments mm. they had in their marriage. So the truth is, for anyone out there who still has the chance to make a decision before you marry someone, you have this opportunity right now to notice these red flags and take a walk immediately. Yeah. Because if it's green, the green light, everything is going good. But the moment you heard the amber deep run. Because the truth is oh, that... Oh, you see what I did Yeah, I, I heard you. Amber, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amber, amber Oh, oh you heard I didn't, it didn't click. the amber. No, I heard the amber, but I didn't hear the deep. Oh. <laughs> No, that was a major case that we also, you know, kept an eye yeah. on this Amber Heard oh, and Johnny Depp. See, Amber is like, let me sleep. 
You know, because the truth is that people forget that abuse runs both ways. It's good mm. that you brought it up, yeah. babe, because the truth is that when we're talking about abuse here, we're not. most times people always tend to look at the man being the abuser, but sometimes women mm. too can be very abuse. abusive. So we're, try, we're actually trying to tell you know, both male and females out there to look out for these red flags on both sides, mm. you know, and make sure you run. Seriously, you can't change anyone. A lot of people have issues or things that have made them become that way, yeah. and the truth is that it's only God that can help to change them. It's That's really right. only God. And once she notices these red flags, or uh, uh, red flags in terms of things like uh, maybe the person is very wasteful with money, it's mm. also a red flag. Because mm. trust me, one day that person will sell house on top of your head. <laughs> let, let me say it in English. The person will sell the house on, on top, the of, top your of your head. head. <laughs> But seriously, you know, some people, that's the red flag. Some people are just wasteful, wasteful. They don't know how to spend money. And, or maybe they're always spending it on, on get, getting drunk or buying things that are not necessary. Even with stepping way above their budget. That is another red flag right there that would cause trouble down the line. And sometimes, be honest about it. Yeah. Hey, I'm not good with money. Are you good with money? Yeah. Because... Learning to work on each other's weaknesses yes. and strength is important. It might be a weakness. But... Yeah, so so before you throw him away, it's not good with money. If he's willing to have that conversation, or she's willing to have that conversation, oh, so how are you with money? Mm. Like, honestly, I'm not good with money. The, 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 the key word there is willing. Yeah. That's the key yeah. word. That even if you notice some red flags with people and you can see that the person is willing to want to make a change. I'm not just saying it, but the person is willing, willing to really, really make that change. Then it's worth giving the person a mm -hmm. second look. But if it is someone that you've noticed, you've given them time, you've noticed, you've talked about it, you've discussed, and this person is just saying, oh, I beg, that is how I am. Or there's nothing I can do about mm. it. Or this is how I've been or, since I've been a child. I'm talking about the red flag, whatever the red flag is. If the person just comes from that point of view of like, ah, this is how I've there always been. money is meant to be spent too. You know, ah, ah. Hey, you, if you know, don't spend, more will not come. It's not, I'm not even going beyond the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. other things too. If that person is not someone willing enough to want to learn to make changes, and that is another thing I, I want to bring out of that. Someone who is willing, how willing is he or she in compromising? Mm. That how willing is you or she to compromise? Because the truth is, yes, we might have been set in our ways regarding the way we want to do some certain things. But now you want to spend your life with somebody else. You have to be willing to compromise, which is something I love that my husband and I do a lot for each other. For someone like me, I've been single for quite a while. So now I'm coming into a household where I have to share my time, share so many things. It can be a little bit conflicting mm. for me because sometimes I'm just used to when I want to go and eat, I'm going to eat by myself. Mm -hmm. Or when I want to eat, I can just eat one slice of bread and butter and I'm okay. But this time around, I have to cook. I have mm. to do this. I have to go. Show. You know, it, there's a lot of changes that have come for me that I have to now work around and I'm happy to I'm happy to actually do it. And there are some times that, you know, some things that my husband notices and he says, ah, babe, like this, like this now. And I'm like, oh, I'll have to adjust. And there are some things that even me, I'm like, ah, babe, mm -hmm. now. There are one or two things that I just feel like, you know, if you do it like this, you do it like this. And one thing I love about the two of us is we genuinely listen to each other. Yeah. My husband especially trips me with that thing. I'll just talk about something now. Sometimes I even say it in passing. I've even forgotten I mentioned it. I will notice the next week my husband is actually trying to do that thing or to adjust and you know fix that thing I mentioned. And I'm like, babe, I just love that about you. That you know you actually listen to what I'm saying mm -hmm. and vice versa. So it's very important that you have someone that is willing to compromise that listens. Mm -hmm. So this to us are, are major deal breakers for us, and they, are, they should be major deal breakers for you that you end up being with someone who is willing to listen and compromise. You know. Like so we, we've actually said so much, so much. in this particular episode. I, I don't even know if we can genuinely cover everything, mm. but for us, these were major things that we had to highlight that are important for us. Oh, and also, it's actually good and it's okay to write a list of what you want in someone. The truth is that it's okay to write a list. Sometimes, like my husband would say, mm. <laughs> God took... God will take that list and say it's... But sometimes but when we talk of yeah, this in this. terms of you know your values, what you want, the, yeah. the things you would not compromise in. And yeah. we're not talking about his financial status, we're not talking about that. What does it does he believe in God? What's his faith like? What's the concept of money? 
or you know things that you very know are, ge- are very important the values that things that no matter what the out no matter what changes on the outside yeah. this does not change, change. God bless you. Oh, my husband has just. I don't said too much, but when I drop it, I drop no, it. No, you drop it like it's hard. That's it. No, but seriously, that even if things change on the outside, it doesn't, doesn't change, change inside. Yeah. And those things are very, 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 very important. It's mm-hmm. very, very important that you pick on all these things. And like we said earlier on, those major needs that need to overlap. How do you want to raise your children together? Your religious beliefs. Mm-hmm. It's important that you guys are on the same page. Mm-hmm. You know, are you sure you can marry someone else from another religion? You have to ask yourself these questions. If you marry someone from another religion, if they ask you tomorrow that you need to stop going to church or stop going to, are you willing to do it? And even when All you marry things, someone from your... You have your, to ask yourself ahead. And, and when you marry from someone from your religion... That is from a different denomination. Even if they're from the same denomination, another, they'll be like, look, no, this is just a you're carrying your head. My own is on Sunday. Yeah. You know, so so and so when you wake up in the morning to pray, you, you doesn't person doesn't believe in praying together. Person doesn't believe in certain things. You know, and they're like so and the person is when you believe that this is where the direction in which God wants you to go, the person is hindering your yeah. progress in God. So it's important. No. Yeah, those things he, my husband actually said are very, very true. You know, are you sure it's someone that will not stifle when you want to pray in the house? Someone that will say, which midweek service are you going yeah, for? Exactly. Madam, will you sit down inside the house? You have to make sure at the end of the day you're with someone that you guys have similar interests when it comes to church or it comes to your religion or whatever it is you guys are doing together. You are on the same page. Your needs should overlap. Or it's someone that even if he doesn't want to go, maybe because he's tired or something, will not say, mm-hmm. babe, you, you can go now. I'll watch online. Remember our you know? vows. I said, yeah. I said that I promise not to hinder you yeah. from what God yeah. wants you to become. Yeah. And God being... and. The point is not that oh God wants you to be rich or successful. No, in the in your pursuit of Him, yeah, my job is yeah, to find you true. and lead you more, yeah. and not block you and hinder you from that. Yeah, and not hinder you. So the, these things are it's just very important. Also about the issue of money, how you guys be taking care of your money, your finances. Are you going to be having a joint account? All these things you need to discuss. All these things. Gender you, roles. Gender roles. Who, who can, are you guys going to be helping each other out in the house? Like, my husband and I, we don't have any particular role in this house. Uh, seriously. Today, my husband can say, babe, I'm the one cooking. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, oh, babe, I'm the one vacuuming. I'm the one doing the laundry. And tomorrow I can say, oh, babe, I'm the one cooking. You know, we, we just don't have any timetable. Mm-hmm. Everybody does everything. Mm-hmm. In the house. We actually do that. Oh, he's the one that does the school run sometimes. It's me. Or he's the one that changes the diapers of the kid, of, of our little one. Or it's me. There's no, there's no box. Like, mm-hmm. okay, oh, women are kitchen. You go there. Oh, me. Mm-hmm. No, we actually cross. Uh, Pollinates. <laughs> no, so those things are very important that, you know, you discuss these things ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And find out what really works for you guys. But don't make sure it's something that's properly discussed. So these are just some basic, um, I said basic, crucial sure. deal breakers. I mean, we didn't know? cover all, but we gave you yeah. as much. If there's anything you think about that, you know, we, you need us to touch on, please add in the comment section. And yeah. before before we... we no, I just wanted up, to quickly do I just wanted to again. say while you do the recap that that most people that love us, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, but always please like, please follow. Don't forget to like and follow. Yes, go on. Yes, I just wanted to do a quick yeah. recap, you know, of everything we talked about first, the most um, today rather, in the things you need to pay proper attention to before you say, I do. Mm. Number one, take care of you first. Make sure you've healed. Make sure that you are on that right path of finding yourself. Do your personal self-analysis. Make sure you're doing okay before you bring somebody else into your algorithm. Mm. And um, also, uh, what are you looking for in a spouse? You know, be sure of what you need. Be sure of what you're looking for. And also ask yourself, okay, once I even find that person, what am I bringing to the table? Mm. It's very important that you two, you know what you are bringing. What are you going to give, you know, that other person that is coming into the relationship with you? Then the question, do opposites really attract? Yeah. Yeah, but to an extent, to an extent, what is more important is that you have more similarities. It's very important that you actually have more similarities, have a lot of things you do in common a lot more, have similar interests, similar values, similar goals, and let your wants, you know, be, be sure of what you need and what you want in 
your relationship and don't let your wants be deal don't, don't let them be deal breakers in your marriage don't let it be or your relationship that when i say wants if you like football i like basketball don't let the fact that to compromise don't that. find a way to compromise at the end of the day you don't necessarily have to like the same things when it comes to hobbies Yes, all those things, hobbies and all of that. You know, it, you don't have to have the same hobbies. It's not mm -hmm. really, you know, but other things, you know, when you guys come together, your needs in that relationship should be paramount. They should be the most important thing. Overlapping needs are important. Make sure you have similar ideas on how you want to run your home, on, on your ideas on monies, yeah. on, your, on how you guys communicate, communicate your needs. Talk and talk and talk and talk about it. Don't just talk, talk and do. Because sometimes people just talk, 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 and don't do. Talk and do. Make sure you are genuinely listening mm -hmm. to what your other person is saying they need, and you guys find a way to make it work. Know your own needs. Find out your partner's needs and find the best way you guys can make them work together. But at the same time, make sure you have overlapping needs. That is yeah. the same goal, similar needs that work together in building your relationship and your home. And make sure attraction, attraction, attraction is so key. You have to be get married to someone you're attracted to, both physically and sexually. Talk about your sex life. How do you want your sex life to be? What do you want? Sex is very, very important. In your marriage or relationship, it has cost a lot of marriages to actually fall apart because one person likes sex, the other person didn't like sex. One person felt sex was only for making children. Mm -hmm. So things like that, you have to talk about it and be sure you are on the same, same page. page. And then lastly, the red flags. Ugh. Always look out for the red look flags. Out. Look out for the red flags. And once you see that major crazy red flag of abuse, run. Run. run remember you cannot change anyone you really cannot change anyone and uh, uh, and lastly pray 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 about it don't just pray for god to you know help you arrange it the way you want mm. it ask god to pray and give you what he truly designed wants you for. and he knows the person that he, he you know he knows the person or the type of person yeah that will you know will fit yeah like pieces of puzzle. Yeah. like Because there's no puzzle, puzzle you can't solve. Yeah. Like so, a baby so, yeah. <laughs> so he knows where he, he... Ask him. Yeah. Is this the person... Is the, Will this person follow your agenda for me? Yeah. And even when you finally ask, are you ready to listen? Are you ready to listen to God? That's what I'm saying. Because are sometimes we ask and you don't want to listen because maybe the person God is pointing you to does not look like what you want. You're like, ah, mm. God, this one... Ah. But God knows your future. He knows where you're going. He knows what you really need. Mm. Typical example, Snatcher and I. When God threw us at each other, we well, had our now. doubts and our questions because we we're like, ah, this is mm. not the picture we had. You know, we had our different pictures of mm -hmm. what we wanted. Mm -hmm. But when the moment we laid it at God's feet and we said, we genuinely told God that God, if this is you, make it happen. Okay, you do it. And there's something about God. When you give him your it's will, like, ooh, oh, God is like, oh my God. She said, I can't do anything. Watch me. Watch me. <laughs> yes. And God, will, and, and at the end of the day, we look at you and we're like, thank God we didn't miss each other. Yeah. Because it's been the best decision ever. Right now, I really can't see anybody else that would have fit me right now. I really can't. You know, mm. because he's just been the perfect fit. Don't get us wrong. We still they fight you. Mm, we'll soon fight after this. Uh... <laughs> we still have our <laughs> issues and everything. But the most important thing, oh, let's even say, let me even say it like this. The picture that we posted recently on Instagram, where you were looking at my something, that was traditional mm. wedding day. You won't believe that that day of that traditional wedding, we stay at the fight. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to let people know that. I mean, it took our parents to just come both of us We down. both had a fight that day. As beautiful and glamorous as at the end of that day, we had a really bad mm. fight. But look at us here. But the fight, but God made that fight happen. Or should I say... He allowed it to happen so that we could both learn some major yeah. lessons at that point in time and fix some things quickly. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk more yeah. of that when we talk about conflict resolution. Yeah, like well, I just wanted to give yeah, that hint yeah. that things like that actually still happen. You just have to know how you deal with it and not let it um, take root. That's take where root, I'm going yes. to. Don't let it take root. So, wow, we said a lot. So that's Ooh. why we're talking about pray, pray, pray ahead. Because that, where, where I was trying to go to with that was the two of us always made sure we prayed about these things. Even in the middle of that fight, while we're having that disagreement, 
he was praying in his heart. I mm-hmm. was also praying in my mm-hmm. heart. And God listened to us, you know, and helped us to settle it. So your heart and how you deal with those situations when mm-hmm. they come up matters. So that's another thing you should look for in wherever you're with. How are they willing to want to settle issues when they happen? This is even before you guys marry, safe. Not to talk of the other issues that will come concerning life, home, children, things you always have to deal with that will bring up different disagreements and different fights. Okay. Yeah, so basically pray, pray, pray about it at the end of it all. Wow, it's been awesome. It's been a lot today on the Meet the Snatches podcast. Yes, yes, yes. First episode of the I Do series. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Thank you. as usual, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, big shout out to oh, our amazing subscribers. We love you guys so much. Keep Make sure you subscribe at Meet the Snatches. You follow us on Instagram at Meet the Snatches, at Nikki Laoye, at Soul, Soul Snatcher. Snatcher. And of course... We'll be seeing you on another exciting episode of the Meet the, the Snatches Podcast. Podcast. So don't forget, drop your comments. If there's anything you feel that we've left out, make sure you let us know about it. Drop a comment. Send us an email if you want to ask our advice on anything. We're willing to talk to y'all. We love you guys. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. before we leave, a big shout out to... Yeah, Divided UK. Divided. Shout out to Divided UK. Divided, we love you. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Meet the Snatches Podcast. We hope it was an inspiring one for you today. And you know what? We look forward to hearing from you. You can actually send us your questions and comments via email, meetthesnatches at gmail.com. Keep following us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. We look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Meet the Snatches Podcast. And until next time, stay blessed. Bye, guys.